In the Simon Effect experiment we are working on, we so far have a trial that shows a fixation cross for 500 milliseconds and a stimulus for 1000 milliseconds. To make it easier to quickly test further changes, we can temporarily shorten the trial. The trial is presenting a picture stimulus which contains a red box picture part. Next we will work on showing different coloured boxes. We will make a scenario with 10 trials, 5 with a red box and 5 with a blue box, in a random order. There are many ways we could go about this. A good general principle to follow is to reuse as much as you can while only changing what needs to be changed. We will start by continuing to use a single trial and picture object while having a box picture part object for each colour. We'll discuss an alternative approach at the end. First let's make a blue box. Initially, the picture stim contains the red box. However, we can use the picture's type set part method to replace that part in the picture. For example, we could switch to the blue box before presenting the trials. The first argument is the index of the part to replace. Running this, we see the blue box 10 times. What we need now is a list which indicates which box to display for each trial. One way to do this is with a box array. Each element in the array will refer to one of our two box objects. We might first try creating this array in SDL. This array contains five references to red box and five to blue box. We can use the array shuffle method to randomize the order. Each time through the loop, we replace the box in the picture with an element from this array. The loop variable is used as the index into the array. Lastly, we replace the 10 in the loop condition with the result of the array count method. If we change the array size later on, we won't have to update that code. Running this, we see 10 trials with red and blue boxes in a random order. Now let's improve how we construct the boxes array. If we imagine having many more than five trials per colour, or more than two colours, defining the array in SDL becomes cumbersome and error prone. We can fix this using PCL instead. First, let's define a variable for the number of trials of each colour. Everywhere else in the code, whenever we need that value, we should use trials per colour and not five. This will make it easy to change the number of trials per colour without making mistakes. Next we create the array initially empty and use a loop to add box values to it. The loop body will run trials per colour times and add one of each colour each time. Because we are randomly shuffling the array afterwards, it doesn't matter in what order we add values. Running this, we see the same behaviour as before. Changing the value of trials per colour to see something else, for example 2, we see that everything runs correctly with no further changes. Next, let's make some changes to allow us to easily change the number of colours used. Although it's not relevant to our Simon effect experiment, in many other cases you may want this kind of flexibility. You might guess that in order to have a program flexibly handle a variable number of items, we should use an array of items rather than using separate items. Firstly, we put the box objects in an array in SDL. Now, when we are adding boxes to our boxes array, we can loop over all the colours and add one of each. We can run this to verify that the behaviour is the same. 
Now, to add any number of other colours, we only need to add boxes to the coloured boxes array and nothing else. For example, we can add green. Notice that naming these boxes is no longer necessary, except for red box, which is used as the initial part in the picture stem. Let's try another variation that will be useful in the future. The array boxes is basically used to store the order of colours. Instead of using a box array, we could also use an int array which contains the indices of the colour to use. In other words, one for the first colour, two for the second, etc. First we change the array to an int array. When populating the array, we add the indices instead of the box references. Finally, when setting the picture part, we use the box from the coloured boxes array whose index is given by the current element of which colour. That is, which colour I will be 1, 2, etc. And coloured boxes, which colour I, will be a reference to the appropriate box. Run this to confirm that the behaviour is still the same. Given the current state of this experiment, doing things this way doesn't add much and may even seem a bit more complicated. However, we will see that in more complicated situations where more than one experimental variable is being randomized, using indices instead of object references becomes very useful. We conclude with one final variation. This time we will use a single box object whose color is changed each trial. First we go back to using a single box. Instead, we will need an array of the colours to be used. We use the type RGB colour, whose values represent a colour. Instead of setting the picture part, we now set the colour of the box. Run to confirm the correct behaviour. Since the colour is the only thing changing, this may, may seem like the most straightforward approach. The reason we started with the multiple box approach is because that approach is the most useful when using other types of picture parts. Suppose that instead of coloured boxes we are presenting text using text picture parts, or images using bitmap picture parts. In the case of box, the graphic is not rendered until the picture is presented, so changing the colour property of a box takes no time at all. However, when using text with a single object, one would have to reset the caption and then regenerate the graphic between trials. In the case of bitmap, one would have to reset the file name and then load the graphic from disk between trials. These operations can take what we at MBS think of as a long time, that is milliseconds or even tens of milliseconds. In most experiments, that probably won't matter at all. However, in order to cover experiments with even the most demanding timing, we recommend preparing all graphics of this type at the beginning of the experiment before presenting any trials. The approach with multiple picture parts has this property.